The Lord be with you. Our passage this morning is from the second chapter of Philippians. This third and final sermon of sort of farewell series here is we've been looking at the benediction I share with you each week. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. And then this morning we ask the question, what will we do about that? So Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, reading through verse 15. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, and taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work within you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, oh God, we pray for ears to hear ears that hear your words speaking to us through Holy Scripture. Free us of distraction so that we may hear your Spirit speaking and calling to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this whole thing, this whole life of faith for me uh, began when I was 18 years old uh, in a little community not too unlike this one uh, called Goodman, uh, Goodman, Alabama, right outside of Enterprise. And Goodman, if you were to go there today, it might look familiar to you. Uh, you come into town, you take what is College Street in town and drive until it becomes County Road 606. I'm old enough now to remember when we just called it College Street Extension. And it drove all the way in dead ends right in the parking lot of Goodman Baptist Church. And I say you'd find it familiar because you know what's right across the street from Goodman? Guess. A store. And it's a little old-fashioned, though, compared to ELs. They have a hitching post outside. Uh, the men don't play dominoes. They play checkers. And the store has changed hands over the years. And in fact, now it may even be closed. I'm not so sure. Goodman is a lot like Williams. The church is a little different. The inside, rather than two rows with purple carpet and purple padding, there are three rows with green carpet and green padding. And the last time I was there, they had painted the walls green. And so folks were walking out looking a little green when they came out. But it was there in that church before they painted the walls green and before they made the very controversial decision to put screens up in the sanctuary. As I was walking out the back one Sunday morning, Jimmy Clark, the deacon in that church, grabbed me by the arm and pulled me into a, a back room there. He sat me down and Jimmy said, do you know Jesus loves you? He said it really fast. That's how he talks. I said, uh, Jimmy, I reckon. He said, well, do you love Jesus? Uh, Jimmy, I reckon. And then he said these words. What are you going to do about it? 
And friends, that, that stuck inside my brain probably forever. Now, what Jimmy meant was, what are you going to do? Are you going to come down the aisle at the evening service next Sunday? Are you going to join the church? Are you going to be baptized? That's what Jimmy meant. But for some reason, the Holy Spirit has stuck those words inside of my brain, inside of my mind, inside of my soul for all these years. I think about those words when I read these words. These are my favorite from Paul. Some of my favorite in the New Testament, the Philippian hymn. It's a hymn that actually predates Paul. I wish I could hear it in Koine set to music, maybe Aramaic. I don't know what, song, what language it was originally sung in. The earliest hymn of the church, page one in the ancient hymn books, would have been the Philippian hymn. When Paul writes it, recounts it to them, he speaks of a God who made the world, made the cosmos, who, as I like to say, set the sun on fire. A God who who wields all knowable and unknowable power. And how this same God emptied himself to become like us, even lower than us, to become a slave and to die, not of old age, not of cancer, not of an accident, but the cruelest death imaginable, to be nailed to a cross where he would bleed and asphyxiate and die. God could have done it any other way. I often wonder that. People sometimes say, what's the one question you're going to ask God when you get to heaven? I think, I think the first question I would ask is probably why. And then I'd probably say, why this way? Why not just make us all right? Why not just open the heavens at, on our 12th birthday and reach down and tap us on the head and say, I'm here, you dummy? Why not send a spirit that we can see that, that appears to us in a special place where we can take a picture, maybe snap a selfie, put it on Instagram and say, I had God visit me today? Why do it this way? I think the answer is pretty simple. I just don't know if I like it. Because of his love for us. To show us that, yeah, the God of the cosmos loves us so deeply. That, that God, who death shouldn't touch, would choose to die for us. Out of his love. That's the summation of the gospel. That's why I say it every week. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. And I hear Paul's words and, and I wonder, what, what can I do? What can we do about this? What do we do about a God who empties himself to become like us? To die worse than us? What do we do with the love from a cosmic, eternal God that we don't deserve? That we didn't sign up for? What do we do about that? In the earlier service, somebody asked me, are you ever going to tell us <laughs> what we should do about that? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'll spoil it. No, I don't, I don't know the details. But I think you already do. I think you already know what we're called to do about that. Watching these pictures, it was a surprise in the early service, so I didn't watch many of them. They were too, it reminded me of a lot of stuff. But that's what you do about it, right? Wit, I saw ours and I thought, man, I'm glad we can't smell that picture. <laughs> like, that's what you do about it. You, you load up on a crazy hot day and go to Perry County and build somebody a, a front porch because they need one. What do you do about it? You bag rice and beans uh, for somebody in another state, even though you don't know where they're going or what it's for. Somebody asks you to do it, and so you do it. What do you do about it? You, you drive by the cemetery and see people with mattocks and shovels and wonder what they're doing and get out, and you jump in and help them and realize that you're shoulder deep in somebody's grave. What do you do about it? You... You get a phone call in the middle of the night and you show up at someone's house 
before the ambulance. And you're there. And you're there as long as you can be, as long as you know to be. What do you do about it? You stand around in a driveway wondering what to say, not knowing what to say, offering to go buy biscuits to come back with them. What are you going to do about it? I don't know. Make a casserole, leave it on someone's counter and say, I love you. I'm praying for you. What are you going to do about it? I, I don't know. Pay for the person in the car behind you at the drive through I don't know. But you know. This love that we don't deserve is given to us. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> we give it away. Do I get it right all the time? No. Not in a million. In fact, it's a shame that I'm even called to be a pastor at times. I get it so wrong. But I try. And you're called to try. I pray that we do. Because God loves us. There's nothing we can do about it. So what are we going to do about that? I wanted... I felt it appropriate. This has nothing to do with my sermon, but I, I felt it was appropriate to, um, on my last day, my last words to you. Uh, a couple of years ago, Lola Jean showed me a book uh, that Casey had put together of some sayings of Buford's. If there's one person in this community I wish I'd gotten to know, uh, it was Buford. I often hear how much uh, he and I might have had in common or how much we might have talked. Uh, but I, I wanted to read this to you um, just because it, it's how I feel. Uh, it's from Buford. He wrote it, I guess, in 91, but probably said it before then, Lola Jean. I, I don't know. It says, a good time to leave. It says, if given a choice, I'll pick a day when I know truly everyone would like me to stay. If there be one single wish among you that I'd already be gone, I'm sorry, my friend. I guess I stayed too long. I didn't know Buford, but I could hear him saying that. And I hope you know I mean that. If there's any among you who wish I was already I'd stay too long, I'm sorry that I hung around longer than you'd like. But I do hope. I do hope that as we miss you, that you'll miss us. And that we'll see one another again, if not at the corner of Pleasant Valley and Nisbet Lake, if not on the front bench at Yells or in the pew at the sanctuary, that maybe we'll see each other in some hot, muggy place in Perry County. Maybe we'll run into each other on the way down 167 on the way to the beach. Maybe we'll cross paths at some other thing we're all doing together. But I know, regardless, that as much as we like homecoming here in November, there'll be a great homecoming one day when we'll see one another again. And I look forward to that day to seeing you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the love that you give us. We thank you for the call that you've put on us. Lord, help us to answer it. Help us to live into your love. Help us, Lord, to be stewards of that love we don't deserve. Remind us with each breath we take that you love us. There's nothing we can do about it. So help us, Lord, to do something about that. In your name we pray. Amen.